In today's video, we're going to look at Casey Neistat's journey from a YouTuber founder to now a YouTuber angel investor. This is becoming more and more of a trend, whether you look at celebrities or other YouTubers, and I think it's worth looking at this, whether you're a creator yourself or someone who watches these people. So one of the reasons why this is happening so much more often is because people know that their time and fame, their time of making money is finite and they want to invest in things that are long-term. Real estate is nice if you're someone who wants to manage that, but it doesn't really have as much upside as angel investing. And you could do public equities. I think a lot of people still do that. But again, the upside is relatively capped. Angel investing is unique because they have a bit more control there and they can actually add tangible value. For anyone new to the channel, we look at creators and the intersect between finance and also startups. If that sounds interesting, consider subscribing. And while you're down there, feel free to hit that thumbs up button because it tells YouTube that this is worth watching. So let's take a step back and look into Casey's history. I'm not really going to go through his history as a YouTuber because I feel like he does a pretty good job telling that story already. One of the things he ended up launching as a YouTuber while in New York was Beam. He founded Beam with Matt Hackett in 2014 and it was meant to be a new social network. In 2015, they ended up raising $2.6 million from Lightspeed Ventures and also Gary Vee's fund. Some other companies that Lightspeed Ventures has invested in as a firm, so the lending startup, Stitch Fix, as well as Epic Games. For anyone that doesn't know, Epic Games is the studio behind Fortnite. In May 2016, Casey announced that they raised $6 million in total. You've raised $6 million. Just around $6 million. There wasn't really a valuation attached to this, but oftentimes within Series A and also seed stage companies, you can multiply it by either 5 or 10 to get the valuation. I would say back in the day, five was a lot more common, and now it's closer to 10. So $6 million raised times that by five, valuation range is going to be about $30 million. Also, this is a bit of speculation because it's not announced anywhere else, but it is the standard pricing. So one big thing that you guys need to know is that most startups in the early stage, pre-seed, seed, series A, and maybe even series B, the expectation is that you don't make money. So this sounds really crazy to people and they don't get it, but the easiest way to think of it is like a restaurant. So yes, you might be getting cash flow coming in, but you're not going to be positive just because you had so many costs in the early stage. So looking at some data, restaurants typically don't become profitable until three to five years down the line. Startups are a little bit better two to three years, but it does take time. So for startups are raising money, dealing with these initial costs in order to build the product, to grow the product, startups don't always go as planned. And in November of 2016, they sold to CNN. If you go to a podcast that Casey and Matt did with Y Combinator, you can hear that the process took a lot of time. It wasn't something that was just done because they were about to die. It was something that took six months. It takes forever. It takes six months if you want to go down that path at a minimum. The acquisition was priced at $25 million and a lot of people seem to get very angry with this. Earlier on in the video, we talked about how the valuation was probably in the $30 million range. So this didn't seem like too much of a stretch. This was returning capital back to the investors. So that's half of it. And the other half is that it's kind of structured like an aqua hire. So in the startup world, an aqua hire is when you acquire a company in order to acquire the employees. For most of these transactions, you're looking to pay about $1 to $1.5 million per technical person. We have 11 full-time employees at Beam right now, and 10 of them are technical. So if you had a 10-person team, you're looking at at least a $10 million acquisition. Factor in that you're returning money to the investors and that you're also paying a premium for Casey Neistat. He has value by himself as well. Then that $25 million range doesn't seem too bad. One other thing that people got angry with is the fact that CNN acquired them and then subsequently shut the company down. This is pretty common with aqua hires and why I think it might be part of that as well. So even if you look at a company like Google, they're the king of this. If you look at the Google graveyard, you can see that they actively acquire teams, shut down their product, and then have those employees work on other things. Focals by North, acquired and then shut down. Fabric, acquired, shut down. There's going to be a gigantic list of their acquisitions, but some of their products do end up surviving. Two really good examples is what you're currently watching, YouTube, as well as Android. So the reason companies do this is because they can lock you in for four years by paying you an absurd amount of money. Vest in peace is a pretty common term, and for most people, you're not going to leave that because the pay is so much higher. It's cheaper to have you on payroll working on something else than to have you being a competitor, building out an alternative product that might end up eating your lunch. 
The main takeaways from this part is that I don't think Casey's a failure. A lot of people seem to perceive him as a failure just because his startup didn't become a billion dollar company. It's kind of the same as the people making fun of basketball players for missing shots. And in reality, you're probably still not as good as the person getting paid $15 million to shoot the ball. I don't think CNN overpaid for this because that's the normal cost of acquiring a startup. And I'm guessing that there was competition in that bidding process. It might not have been a home run, but it allowed him to get on base and to see the value of startups. I think the other key thing there is that we were far enough along in conversations with a couple of other companies. We could leverage that. One final thing is that people saw this as Casey selling out, and I don't really think that's the case. He basically provided a soft landing for his employees and returned money to investors. It was acquired for $25 million. It's not him pocketing that money. If he really wanted to sell out, then he would have stayed at CNN and vested over those four years. If anything, I think him and Matt left millions of dollars on the table by leaving CNN early. So that's the first half of the story. And now the second half is that he started angel investing. For most people, angel investing, you're probably looking to make 10 to 30 investments in order to diversify enough. So I'm guessing he's going at that cadence rather than just putting all of his money into a few companies. I'm pretty sure there are a bunch of investments that are not publicly available, but we'll look at the four that are. We have public, house, stir, and can. Kind of funny that they're all pretty straightforward one word companies. We'll look at the three that are consumer facing and it's pretty interesting because he only shouts out some of them. Public.com is an investment platform. They've raised a few rounds of money, but the one Casey was in was a series B. This was $15 million and it was in March of this year. 15 times five, I would guess the valuation is around $75 million. The main draw of the platform is that it allows you to do fractional shares before a lot of these other platforms added it as a feature, and it also allows you to share your trades. So you don't have to do this, but you have the option of making it public. On a side note, if you want to get a free $10 slice in stock, you can use the referral link down below. Give it a try and let me know what you think. So this one's pretty interesting because when you look at Casey's relationship with them, Casey hasn't really mentioned them at all. I don't see any tweets mentioning this and I don't think he's mentioned it in a video. In a lot of ways, the fact that he's not shouting out every single one of his investments is a good thing because it tells you that he's only shouting out the ones that he thinks are good for you. Obviously, there's a lot of ways to look at this in terms of incentives and it's probably something I'm going to cover in a future video. The second one is going to be House, which is an aperitif drink. I'm actually going to let Mandy explain because I think she does a better job than me. So House is a direct-to-consumer aperitif product, and an aperitif isn't really popular in the U.S. yet, but in Europe, they usually drink it before dinner in order to open up your appetite. Side note, Mandy is an investor, but I'm not. We do have it on the shelf, and it tastes pretty good. They raised a $4.5 million seed round, and I'm guessing at about a $22.5 million valuation. So this one is the one that confuses me the most with Casey because I'm not really sure what's going on. So on one hand, if you look at Twitter, you can see that he shouts it out. So that's pretty common among angel investor and VC Twitter that you shout out your companies. On the flip side though, if you look at some videos, it's strategically not mentioned. Drinking that rosé aperitif or whatever. So for that one, it might be because Architect Daily didn't want to mention, but pretty interesting still. Even if you go over to Candace's TikTok, you can see that it's featured in a video, but it's strategically hidden. So for half the video, the house logo was facing her. Kind of like this, but then if you go to the second half of it, the final little bit, it's turned the other way. So now it's strategically not facing the camera as well. So there are some potential reasons for this. The first one is that he knows his audience doesn't like stuff like this and it's not worth mentioning. Number two, he likes it, but he doesn't love it. Number three, there could be some other compliance thing that we're not thinking about. Number four, the final one is a lot of celebrities and these larger influencers don't really play the way you think. So a lot of people think that just because you're an investor, you're going to shout this out for free because why wouldn't you? You're invested. The main thing you don't realize is that these people aren't investing a substantial amount of their money into one company. So let's use more of a concrete example. Did you know that Jay-Z and Snoop Dogg were investors in Robinhood? Same thing with Nas as well as Jared Leto. If they don't get paid, then they're not going to shout it out. Even if they invest a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars, that does not mean that they're going to shout out your product. The final angel investment is going to be Can. Basically, CBD water in a can. They raised five million dollars. I'm guessing at a twenty-five million dollar valuation. This one's pretty interesting because he actively tweets about it and he talks about the fact that he's an angel investor. Unlike the other ones, this one's actually featured in a video. 
I think he had about one or two minutes in one of his videos pretty much dedicated to this and the fact that Candace was eating a lot of food afterwards. So there could be some other mechanic in the background that we're not thinking about. It also could be that him and Candace both really like the product. I'm leaning towards that for this one because if you don't like a product, then you're not actively going to keep using it. You as a creator, you as an investor, you have so many different opportunities to invest in different things. You're going to invest in the ones that you actually like and the ones that you feel comfortable using yourself. For me, I'm most bullish on the last one as we see more legalization in different states. But my question for you guys is of his four angel investments, which one do you think is the most interesting? And which one would you invest in? Big reminder, if you want to keep getting these videos, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and a big favor is to give this a thumbs up. With that said though, see you guys next time.